The series begins by telling that high up in the sky, something was coming down towards the earth. At the same time, there was a man named Fung Lang. He was driving his car down a quiet road all by himself, listening to the radio. The radio was buzzing with news about something strange flying towards the earth. Maybe it was a spaceship, like from an alien story. As soon as the object hit the ground, the sky started to rumble loudly, as if a big storm was coming. Fung Length got distracted by this noise. All of a sudden, he couldn't control this car anymore, and it slid across the road into the divider, causing an accident. Luckily, he managed to get out of the car, but he was hurt badly. Then, he passed out. Suddenly, from afar, a mysterious woman appeared, coming out of a bright light. It seemed like she was an alien who had landed on Earth earlier. At that time, the woman wrapped herself in a cloth and seemed to possess superpowers. She wore a necklace emitting blue light around her neck. Fung Length was stunned by the sight of this alien standing in front of him. The alien touched Fung Length's chest, transferring her power to him in order to save him. But then, the car suddenly exploded. Swiftly, the alien used her powers to create a shield to protect Fung Length from the blast. However, the explosion was so powerful that it injured the alien, causing her to vomit blue blood. Then, a drop of her blood landed on Fung Leng's hand. The explosion also knocked the light from her necklace, and she was thrown far into a river. The blue blood on Fung Leng's hand turned into a blue gemstone. One day, Fung Leng woke up after a week since the strange incident. Surprisingly, the doctor didn't find anything wrong with him, and Fung Leng couldn't remember what happened. Meanwhile, an old man was fishing alone when suddenly, an alien showed up from the water. The alien's head turned in odd ways, scaring the old man. Using her advanced technology, the alien, named Che Shou Ki, identified the old man. She tried to approach him, but he ran away in fear. Suddenly, a turtle fell from the sky, surprising Shou Ki. To her amazement, the turtle could talk. Shou Ki explained that she had been underwater on Earth for seven days and had now returned home. She would assured the old man that she would contact her center using her communication device which unfortunately disappeared along with her necklace. Meanwhile, we see Fung Length getting ready for work. He takes a shower, showing off his fit body. Then he picks out clothes from his huge and fancy wardrobe. While enjoying his morning coffee and checking the weather forecast from his robot, his assistant brings him some troubling news. At the same time, Fung Length's ex-girlfriends have shown up at the office wearing wedding dresses, demanding that he marry them all. This unexpected situation quickly becomes a media sensation. Despite his assistant's advice to stay home, Fung Length insists on going to the office. When he arrives, he's immediately bombarded by his ex-girlfriends. However, he remains calm and instructs his assistant to bring all the brides to him. He has a plan to deal with them. One by one, the brides entered his office. At first, Fung Length's ex-girlfriends wanted to pressure him into marrying them. But Fung Length handled the situation calmly. He figured out what each woman wanted most and gave it to them which made them all happy and quiet. They even left the office holding hands and smiling, and they all defended Fung Length against rumors that he was a playboy. After dealing with the ex-girlfriends, Fung Length's assistant told him about the gemstones found at the accident site. Fung Length had held one of these gems while he was in a coma, thinking it might be valuable. But he didn't recognize it, so he knew it wasn't his. To find the gem's owner, Shou Ki borrowed a child's drawing book and sketched the man based on her memory. Meanwhile, the turtle named Shobu kept bothering Shoki, blaming her for being distracted by Earthmen and causing them to miss their flight. Finally, she finished the drawing. Shortly after, Shoki lifted Shobu to see the drawing she had made. At that time, Shobu was puzzled about how they would find the man with such a messed up picture. Shoki confidently reassured him that she would find him for sure. But first, she went to a mall, picked out some nice clothes she liked and then used her power to make the clothes move from the mannequins to her body. It was one of her superpowers. Suddenly, she was drawn to a wedding dress with a crown, deciding she wanted to wear it. Shobu objected, explaining that on Earth, people usually only wear such dresses for weddings. He tried hard to stop her, but Shoki didn't listen and used her power to make the dress and crown move onto her. However, because she hadn't paid for the clothes, people accused her of theft. Shobu reminded her that on Earth, Things aren't freely shared like they are on their planet, because you have to pay for items. Worse still, a security guard appeared, chasing her. Shortly after, Shoki ran into the street, but froze when a car passed by, reminding her of the explosion. She became scared and sat down in the middle of the road. Then, as Fung Length was driving, 
He stopped right in front of Shoki, and then time suddenly froze. Everything around them stopped moving, except for Fung Length. It was strange because he was the only one who didn't freeze. He's not sure why this happened. Maybe it's because Shoki once shared her powers with him. Fung Length felt confused by the unusual situation. What surprised Fung Length even more was that Shoki, the woman he almost hit earlier, didn't freeze either. She just remained calm, unaware that Fung Length was watching her. Then, Shoki took advantage of the frozen moment to escape. Only after she was far away did time start moving again. Because of this strange experience, Fung Length decided to see a psychiatrist. During their conversation, Fung Length revealed that his mother passed away during a rainstorm, which deeply affected him psychologically. He now finds it easy to forget women he meets, especially after a rainstorm. Fung Length began to wonder if he might also experience hallucinations, like when time seemed to stop. From a medical perspective, this was an unusual case. The psychiatrist asked if Fung Leng's condition could be linked to work-related stress. There he explained that he had to deal with numerous brides and grooms that day because of the psychiatrist's advice. However, the psychiatrist didn't accept responsibility. Fung Leng admitted that he used to keep his condition a secret when he was in school. He emphasized that he never regretted hiding it. The scene changes. Shoki discovers a restaurant hosting a lively party full of muscular men. Excited to join the fun, the alien immerses herself in the party atmosphere, even sensing their hormones. It was this enticing smell that drew her out of her spaceship in the first place, hoping to find the man she was looking for. However, none of the men matched the picture she had drawn. At that time, the men quickly offer her drinks, and the alien innocently accepts. Shobu tries to warn her that it might be a hallucination drug, but Shoki has already taken a sip. She casually places Shobu on the table, but a man accidentally spills alcohol on Shobu, causing him to faint immediately. Knowing that, Shoki is annoyed, but the men leave without taking responsibility. Suddenly, the party atmosphere shifted when a male singer began playing his guitar and singing a soft song. There, Shoki found herself drawn to the handsome singer and wondered if he might be the man she had saved before. But her thoughts were interrupted by a ringing phone, and it was Fung Length calling. Soon after, the singer left the stage and rushed to the bathroom. He was actually Fung Li, Fung Length's younger brother. Desperate to find a quiet spot, he answered the phone, lying to Fung Length that he was just painting in his art room. However, Fung Length could still hear music in the background. At that time, Fung Li tried to explain that he was just listening to music for inspiration. Suddenly, someone knocked on the bathroom door. Fung Li was shocked to see Fung Leng's assistant on the other side. On the other hand, Shoki was already feeling tipsy when she spotted Fung Li coming out. She wanted to follow him, but the bar owner suddenly stopped her, presenting a bill for the two bottles of alcohol she had ordered and for the services of the male models she had been with earlier. But Shoki didn't have any money, so she ended up fainting in the woman's arms. At that time, Mrs. Chai, the restaurant owner, felt obliged to let Shoki sleep at her place. Seeing Shoki wearing a fancy watch, Mrs. Che assumed that Shoki must be from a wealthy family. When Shoki woke up, Mrs. Che immediately tried to befriend her and asked if she was the daughter of a rich person. However, Shoki casually explained that she doesn't have parents. Mrs. Che then asks if that means she is an orphan, but Shoki replies that she is not an orphan because children on her planet are bred differently showing that their breeding methods are advanced compared to Earth's. However, her explanation only made Mrs. Che think she was crazy. At that moment, Mrs. Che didn't let it go and got angry, demanding that Shoki pay the bill for last night and for staying the night, totaling 200,000 RMB. But she offers a 20% discount, bringing it down to 120,000 RMB. Upon hearing that, Shoki explains that she has no money. Mrs. Che finds it hard to believe, considering Shoki's appearance and the luxury watch she wears. Thinking that Mrs. Che likes the watch, Shoki gives it to her casually, but Mrs. Che is still not satisfied and starts crying, claiming the watch isn't valuable enough. In that moment, Shoki felt confused when she saw Mrs. Che crying, but then she remembered from her Earth guidebook that tears meant sadness. So Shoki quickly tried to comfort Mrs. Che by promising to do whatever she wanted. Mrs. Che stopped crying suddenly, and agreed with Shoki's offer. Then Mrs. Che suggested that Shoki wear a courier uniform because her real name, Shoki, sounded strange. Mrs. Che thought customers might find it odd, so she suggested Shoki use her surname, becoming Chai Shoki. Now she's ready for work. 
Feeling happy, Che Shou Ki heads out, but she hesitates when she reaches the street. She's afraid of the passing cars. Coincidentally, Feng Leng's car stops nearby at a red light. From his conversation with his assistant, Feng Leng mentions wanting to see his brother, who's locked up in his art studio. As Feng Leng looks at the woman crossing the street fearfully, something catches his eye, but he thinks no one else sees it. At the same time, Che Shou Ki reads the customer's address, then suddenly disappears. Feng Leng is shocked when he notices this and quickly asks his assistant if he saw anyone there, but the assistant is confused and says no. Turns out, Shou Ki teleported to a hotel and casually walked in to deliver an order to a room guarded by two bodyguards. However, the bodyguards blocked her entry, insisting that she couldn't go in. Shou Ki argued that she had to deliver the order directly to the customer as per her boss's instructions. The commotion caught the attention of the people inside the room. Then, a man came out and immediately caught Shou Ki's attention with his good looks. She remembered him as the singer from last night, and he was Feng Li. Whether he was a gentleman or not, Feng Li scolded the bodyguards for being rude to girls and pulled Shou Ki inside to check if she was okay. But once they were alone, Feng Li revealed another reason for bringing her in. Feng Li suddenly declares them as friends and asks Shou Ki to take off his clothes. He explains that he's trapped and needs her help to escape by letting him wear her clothes. Shou Ki questions why Feng Li is locked up, wondering if he's a criminal. Feng Li denies being a criminal but reveals he's trapped by an evil businessman who forces him to paint, believing that art can be produced effortlessly. At that moment, Shou Ki is impressed by Feng Li's handsome appearance, even though she's a bit annoyed. She asks how she can help him. Feng Li explains his plan that he'll wear Shou Ki's clothes and leave, while Shou Ki pretends to be Feng Li and stays in his place. There he assures Shou Ki that the businessmen will only be tough on him, and she won't be involved. Shou Ki agrees to the plan, and that's how Feng Li manages to escape. In the lobby, Feng Li coincidentally meets Feng Leng, who has just arrived. There, Feng Li quickly pretends to fix his shoes and Feng Leng doesn't notice him. Feng Leng casually walks by, reminding Feng Li about an upcoming exhibition. At first, Feng Leng doesn't recognize Shou Ki, but as she tries to hide her face, he becomes suspicious. He removes his hat and reveals Shou Ki's disguise. Feng Leng doesn't remember Shou Ki, but he feels like he's seen her before. At that time, Shou Ki insists that she might have met Feng Leng before but warns him not to come closer. She claims she doesn't know about the bad guys locking up artists, which she thinks is against the law. When Feng Leng asks about Feng Li's whereabouts, Shou Ki refuses to tell him and warns him again to stay away, threatening to use her strength to scare him off. She tries to run and break through the door, but Feng Leng keeps sweetly protecting her forehead from hitting the wood. There Feng Leng pleads with her not to do anything reckless, promising not to make things worse if she just tells him where Feng Li is. Suddenly, Feng Leng's assistant and two bodyguards enter, distracting him. Then Shou Qi seizes the chance to slam into the nearest statue and then dashes away. At that time, the bodyguards want to chase her, but Feng Leng stops them when he notices the name of the restaurant where Shou Qi works. Back at the restaurant, Shou Qi confesses to Mrs. Che that she lost her uniform. To her surprise, she finds it neatly folded on the table. Mrs. Che explains that a handsome man dropped it off for her and left a business card, saying he'd wait for her on the top floor of a restaurant tonight. Mrs. Che was surprised to hear about Shou Qi's contact with a customer on her first day of work. But she realized that having an employee who can quickly connect with customers is exactly what she needs. Shou Qi is happy and eager to solve any problems quickly. Mrs. Che is delighted to have such an enthusiastic employee. Later that evening, when Shou Qi called for Mrs. Che, it was Fun Leng who answered, waiting for her. Shou Qi panicked, wanting to escape, but Mrs. Che appeared at the door and ordered Shou Qi to serve their important client. When Shou Qi tried to argue, Mrs. Che accused her of being selfish and not willing to work overtime for the good of the restaurant and herself. Worried that Mrs. Che would cry again, Shou Qi quickly agreed to work overtime. Soon after, Shou Qi tried to serve Feng Leng by giving him the menu, but he refused and asked for the same food she brought to the hotel before. Shou Qi called the kitchen staff, only to realize they had all been sent home. Feng Leng casually suggested that Shou Qi cook for both of them, and after they ate, she could take him to meet Feng Li. There, Shou Qi politely explained that she could only deliver orders and couldn't cook. If that was a problem for Feng Leng, he could go to another restaurant. Instead, Feng Leng shouted for Mrs. Chai. 
Panicked, Shoki had to obey and went to the kitchen, grumbling in annoyance. The trouble was, she didn't even know what a stove was, so she turned it on and started putting spices and oil into the pan. The fire suddenly grew bigger, making Feng Length panic. He told Shou Qi to eat a fire extinguisher, but she didn't know what it was. Because of that, Feng Length had to take off his shirt and use it to extinguish the fire. But he didn't realize that his actions left Shou Qi stunned, staring at his attractive muscular body. She was so captivated that she touched his chest and breathed in his scent. Suddenly, she paid close attention to Feng Length's face and remembered that he was the man she had saved. Shortly after, Feng Length approached casually, which made Shoki panic. At that time, she tried to dodge, but Feng Length blocked her path, and her face accidentally landed on his chest. There, Shoki felt confused, especially when Feng Length asked her where Feng Li was. Despite her confusion, she happily gave him the restaurant's business card. Only after Feng Length left did Shoki realize her mistake and tried to chase after him, but it was too late. Soon after, Shou Qi quickly teleported to the restaurant where Feng Li was waiting, feeling panicked and urging him to leave immediately. Feng Li then called over some servants who brought them food and drinks. He even arranged for a show for Shou Qi. Feng Li confessed that often delivery couriers think he's a bad person. Suddenly, Feng Length showed up. Feng Li panicked and Shou Qi was captivated by his chest and the device he had. She pressed her face against Feng Length's chest but was pushed away. However, there was no communication device. Shou Qi was then taken to Feng Leng's impressive and technologically advanced house. At that moment, Feng Leng received a call from his assistant, who was concerned about Shou Qi, whose background was unclear. Then Feng Leng saw a book moving on its own and going back onto the shelf. He was confused. He went to check his younger brother's room, but Feng Li was already asleep. Shou Qi, who was also there, pretended to be asleep too, but Feng Leng didn't go into her room. He went back to his room, feeling sad as he looked at a photo of himself and his mother, from when he was a child. Eventually, he decided to go to sleep. Shou Qi thought that the communication device might be in Feng Leng's room, so she teleported there. She made sure Feng Leng was asleep before she started searching his study table, but she couldn't find the device anywhere. In the end, Shou Qi found someone sleeping in the room, and she was really curious about them. But she reminded herself to stay focused and think that maybe Feng Length had brought the device there. She even warned her own hands not to misbehave and just search for the communication tools without touching anything else. Shou Qi carefully began searching Feng Length's body for the device. Suddenly, Feng Length grabbed her hands, pulled her onto the bed, and placed her on top of him. Shou Qi wanted to use her superpowers, but Feng Length quickly grabbed her forehead, causing her powers to stop working. Shoki was puzzled about why her powers always malfunctioned whenever Feng Leng touched her. To make matters worse, he suddenly called security and ordered them to remove Shoki from the house. The next day, Feng Leng casually informed Feng Li that Shoki had left. Hearing that, Feng Li was shocked. He didn't think Shoki would leave while he was still around. He rushed to her room to check, but it was empty. Because of that, he got angry at Feng Leng. At that time, he demanded to know what Feng Leng did to Shoki but Feng Leng wouldn't say. He just hinted that Feng Li wouldn't want to know what really happened between him and Shou Qi. Soon after, Feng Leng's stepmom called Manager Kong, who is also her younger brother, to discuss Feng Leng. It turns out that Feng Li is Feng Leng's younger half-brother. The stepmom was upset with Feng Leng because she believed he influenced Feng Li not to join the company. Instead, Feng Li wants to focus on exhibitions. At that time, his stepmom is worried that if this continues, Feng Li won't be able to join the company. She didn't like that Feng Leng seemed to control everything. She even heard that someone in the company suggested Feng Leng become president. However, manager Kung reassured her not to worry. He promised that as long as he was at the company, he would make sure nothing bad happened. He had an idea and then submitted a report about Feng Leng's investigation. According to the investigation, Feng Leng had a problem where he couldn't remember women or he had amnesia regarding them. Meanwhile, a beautiful and wealthy young woman named Zheng Sui had just returned to China. She talked to Feng Li about her return. Shortly after, Mrs. Che woke Shou Qi up, who now lived in her house. She warned Shou Qi not to break anything or else she would have to pay for it. Mrs. Che was happy about her work because she made a big profit from Feng Leng yesterday. She believed that to become rich, you need big clients. The handsome man from yesterday turned out to be Feng Leng, the CEO of the F Group company. It was said that if Shou Qi could get close to Feng Leng, 
all her debts would be paid off. Innocently, Shoki admitted that she had done something last night. Mrs. Che got excited and showed her a contract letter, telling her to get Feng Length to sign it. The deal was that if Feng Length allowed his employees to eat at his restaurant, they would get a 30% discount. But Shoki couldn't do it because she had a lot of work to do that day. She had to make deliveries and also find a communication device. Mrs. Che was puzzled by what Shoki meant about the communication device. There, Shoki explained that the device was like her house key, and she thought it might be with Feng Length. She had been to Feng Leng's house yesterday but couldn't find the device anywhere. Upon hearing that, Mrs. Che encouraged her to go there again. Shou Qi left in a hurry, so Mrs. Che had to shout after her to bring the contract letter. Now the first place Shou Qi went was Feng Leng's company. Since she couldn't enter the normal way, she just teleported when nobody was looking. At the same time, Feng Leng had just arrived and let his employees get on the elevator first. Right as the elevator doors were about to close, time suddenly stopped just like last time. Feng Leng thought he was seeing things again, so he rubbed his head. Meanwhile, Shoki happily jumped into the elevator, without realizing that Feng Leng hadn't frozen too. Suddenly time started again, and the elevator doors closed. Everyone continued as if nothing had happened. Feng Leng's secretary reported that the president wanted to introduce Feng Leng to a girl, but he was still stunned and confused. Since the employees were called for a meeting, Shoki had the chance to enter Feng Leng's office. First, she slipped the contract letter into Feng Leng's documents, then she started searching the office for the communication device. But before she could find it, she saw Feng Leng coming. At that time, Shoki quickly hid and used her powers to make everything look normal again. But she didn't tidy up Feng Leng's books perfectly, and he noticed one book lying upside down just like last night when he saw a book floating back onto the shelf the wrong way. Immediately, he knew someone mischievous had been in his office. Realizing he had been caught, Shoki used her belt to try to tie up Feng Leng's hands, but he easily untied the belt and cornered her against the wall. Suddenly, Manager Kung's voice interrupted them. At that moment, Feng Leng panicked and pushed Shoki under the table, using his feet to keep her from moving. Manager Kung came to tell Feng Leng about Zheng Sui's arrival. Feng Leng didn't want to meet her and asked him to tell Zheng Sui that he wasn't feeling well. He planned to visit her family home later on his own. Then, after Manager Kung left, Shou Qi quickly freed herself. Feng Leng suddenly remembered the blue gemstone, thinking it might be the gem Shou Qi was talking about. He tried to bring up the gem, but it seemed Shou Qi didn't realize her item could transform into the gem, and she didn't understand what Feng Leng meant. She insisted on searching for the object herself. As Shou Qi left Feng Leng's room, she teleported away, unaware that there were CCTV cameras watching her. When Manager Kung delivered Feng Leng's message, Zheng Sui appeared calm, but inside, she was upset about being ignored. She decided to take matters into her own hands and smashed Feng Leng's car window to get his attention. Shortly after, Feng Leng went to the research department to ask about the blue gemstone and whether it had a chip inside. The researcher said there was nothing unusual about the gem, no chip or anything. When Feng Leng asked about the gem's origin, the researchers started to talk about a sapphire auctioned in Africa. But right then, Feng Leng got a call from his assistant about his car. He had to rush to the parking lot, where Zheng Sui was waiting for him. She admitted she smashed his car so she could see him and even offered him a check as compensation. Upon hearing that, Feng Leng just gave her a cold stare. Meanwhile, Feng Li finished a painting and then his bodyguards returned his cell phone. He saw a message from Zheng Sui that made him suddenly sad. In a flashback, it seemed Feng Li had feelings for Zheng Sui, but she had rejected him before. Angry and hurt, he kicked his painting, fought his bodyguards and ran away. Soon after, Feng Leng arrived at his parents' house, and his father greeted him sarcastically because Feng Leng didn't greet him first. The stepmother pretended to complain that Feng Leng and Feng Li were so focused on the art exhibition that they forgot about family. His father emphasized that the exhibition had to succeed because it was the last chance he was giving them. If it failed, they would have to run the company according to his orders. But once his father left, his stepmother's tone changed suddenly. From what the stepmother said, it seemed Feng Leng was with his mother when she passed away. His stepmother reminded Feng Leng that after all these years, his father still hadn't forgiven him for his mother's death. Meanwhile, at the restaurant, Mrs. Che noticed Shou Qi was lost in thought and lacking enthusiasm. To make matters worse, Shou Qi even asked to go back to her room, but Mrs. Che didn't allow it. Earlier, Shou Qi had promised Mrs. Che to bring Feng Leng, 
but she failed. Suddenly, Feng Li's face popped into Shoki's mind, making her smile. And just like that, Feng Li showed up. In that moment, Shoki couldn't believe he was actually there. Finally, they sat down to eat together. Feng Li seemed cheerful as usual, but it was obvious he was there to drown his sorrows in bottles of alcohol. Shoki was puzzled by his behavior. According to the books she had read, people smiled when they were happy and cried when they were sad. But Feng Li was smiling, yet Shoki felt he was sad. Not long after, Feng Li got drunk, and when Shoki tried to wake him up, he mistook her for Zheng Sui and grabbed her hand. In doing so, he accidentally removed the protection on Shoki's skin, leaving her vulnerable. At that moment, Shoki's strength weakened, and her body temperature dropped, making her very cold. She hurriedly hid in the warehouse, but in her weakened state, she accidentally knocked over various objects. Meanwhile, Feng Length was searching for the missing Feng Li, and his assistant quickly tracked Feng Li's cell phone. Soon after, Feng Length returned to the restaurant and found Feng Li lying drunk on the floor. But what caught his attention was the open warehouse door. He called his assistant to take care of Feng Li, and then entered the warehouse, where he found Shou Qi curled up in the cold. At that time, Shou Qi was suddenly afraid that humans would discover the truth about her, especially since Feng Length intended to call an ambulance. She panicked and stopped him. Feng Length planned to take Shou Qi to the hospital, but suddenly, Shou Qi hugged him tightly, seeking warmth. She was surprised by how warm Feng Length was, unlike anyone else she'd felt. At that moment, Feng Length felt confused as he started to feel warm too. Shou Qi held on to him, asking him to keep hugging her like that. Then, unexpectedly, their lips met. Shou Qi suddenly went limp, but she still tried to keep Feng Length close. Worried, he gave her his jacket to keep warm. Shou Qi snuggled closer to Feng Length, seeking his warmth. At first, Feng Length was unsure, but eventually, he hugged her back. They fell asleep in each other's arms. The next day, Mrs. Che found them still hugging, which made her misunderstand and excitedly wanted to take their photo. Feng Length woke up when he heard the camera clicking. Soon after, Mrs. Che rushed over, and Shou Qi woke up too, quickly moving away once she realized how they were positioned. She didn't remember what happened yesterday, and was confused about why Feng Length was there. But just then, Feng Length got a phone call. Before leaving, he warned Shou Qi not to get involved with Feng Li because they were from different worlds. Essentially, Feng Length didn't want Shou Qi interfering in his family's life again. At first, Feng Length really didn't like Shou Qi because she often bothered him and his brother Feng Li. He also didn't approve of Feng Li being friends with Shou Qi. Feng Length tried different ways to keep Shou Qi away from Feng Li. But unexpectedly, Feng Length ended up falling in love with Shou Qi because of his efforts. As time passed, Feng Length's feelings for Shou Qi grew stronger. When his assistant warned him about an upcoming heavy rain, he started worrying he might forget Shou Qi, due to a special form of amnesia he had. This amnesia made him forget women close to him, even his girlfriend, when it rained heavily. However, when the heavy rain came, Feng Length still remembered Shou Qi, which was unusual because he usually forgot about women close to him in heavy rain. Feng Length had a reputation as a playboy because he often changed partners. He talked about this with Dr. Zhang, who suggested that Feng Length should start a relationship with Shou Qi, believing she was the only woman who could cure his amnesia. Feng Length tried to get closer to Shou Qi, but she refused to be his girlfriend because she believed he didn't truly care about her. Shou Qi explained to Feng Length that she didn't believe in love like others do, and that she would eventually leave, so she didn't want to waste time pretending to love him. Shou Qi tried to avoid Feng Length, but his assistant, Assistant Hun, explained to her that Feng Length wanted her to be his girlfriend because he was sick and believed she could help him get better. Upon hearing this, Shou Qi felt sorry for Feng Length. Despite he scolding her often, he also helped her frequently. So, she agreed to be Feng Length's girlfriend but she made it clear that their relationship was only to help him with his illness, nothing more. Hearing that, Feng Length agreed to this arrangement. Even though Shou Qi only saw Feng Length as her pretend boyfriend, Feng Length never treated her poorly. He didn't make advances towards her. In fact, he made Shou Qi his girlfriend, not just because Dr. Zhang suggested it, but because he genuinely loved Shou Qi. He even felt jealous when he saw Shou Qi spending time with Feng Li. Shou Qi never realized Feng Length's feelings for her because he often acted arrogant, but he had a good heart deep down. Shou Qi sensed the power of the gemstone or signal device she had been searching for. After some searching, she found out it was in the research department of Feng Leng's office. At that time, Shou Qi tried to retrieve the stone using her strength, 
but she couldn't because her powers didn't work there. So she came up with a plan to convince Fun Length to hire her as an employee in his office. Once inside, she tried to find a chance to enter the research room and eventually succeeded in taking the stone. The stone used to be Shoki's blood, but it changed form after dripping onto Fung Length's palm. Previously, Assistant Hunt told Fung Length that when Fung Length was in a coma, he held onto the stone, and after he recovered, he asked Assistant Hunt to take the stone to the research department for study. However, now that Shoki has managed to get the stone back, it slips out of her grasp again within a few minutes. She loses it while searching for Fung Length during a fire at the painting exhibition building owned by Fung Length and Fung Li. The next day, Shoki returns to the painting exhibition to look for the stones but can't find them. After she leaves, an employee named Island enters the room to search for the stones and finds one. Island suspects Shoki of stealing the stone, especially since it disappeared shortly after she left the research department. From that moment on, Island begins to investigate Shoki. When everyone found out that Shoki had taken the company's stone, her co-workers avoided her. Even Fung Length was disappointed in her actions. Shoki wanted to quit her job and stay away from Fung Length, but he stopped her because she had signed a five-year work contract. If she broke the contract, Shoki would have to pay a hefty fine. Despite feeling let down by Shoki, Fung Length didn't want her to leave. On the other hand, Jung Sui, who had feelings for Fung Length, didn't like seeing him with Shoki. She went to Shoki's house and asked her to stay away from Fung Length. Jung Sui even claimed that she deserved to be Fung Length's girlfriend, not Shoki. After hearing her words, Shoki decided to end her fake relationship with Fung Length. However, Fung Length misunderstood Shoki's actions. He thought she did everything because she liked Fung Li more than him, but actually Shoki just didn't want to come between Fung Length and Jung Sui. Fung Length was very disappointed in Shoki. Without much thought, he decided to keep his distance from her by moving her to work with Fung Li in the project development department. Despite trying to distance himself from Shoki, and bring her closer to Feng Li, Feng Length still worried about her. Especially when he knew that Feng Li planned to take Shou Qi off the island for research, and there was a storm forecasted. At that time, Feng Length became concerned and went after them. When he found them, he saw Shou Qi sitting alone under a big tree feeling cold. Feng Length immediately approached her and put his jacket around her to keep her warm. Shou Qi was surprised when she saw Feng Length arriving. However, instead of being happy to see him, Fung Leng scolded her for not taking care of herself properly. He told her that even though he tried to keep his distance from her and let Fung Li take care of her, he couldn't forget about her because he was always worried about her well-being. In that moment, Fung Leng's heart raced as he confessed his feelings to Shou Qi. Suddenly, Shou Qi noticed that the signal device she had been searching for was in Fung Leng's heart. She was shocked but also delighted to find it there. Then, Shou Qi hugged Fung Leng tightly, overcome with happiness. That night, while staying at someone's house, the owner suggested that Shoki should sleep in the same room as his daughter because there was only one guest room. But Shoki refused and said she wanted to sleep with Feng Length. However, Feng Li objected to Shoki sleeping in the same room as Feng Length. He also told the owner that he wanted to sleep in the same room with them, so eventually, all three of them slept together in one room. When heavy rain started again, Feng Length remained calm because he believed this rain wouldn't make him forget Shoki like the previous ones. But unexpectedly, this time, he forgot about Shou Qi, just like he had forgotten about his previous girlfriends during heavy rains. Feng Length became angry and blamed Shou Qi, treating her harshly, just like when they first met. He even suggested ending their relationship right away. Shou Qi was confused by his sudden change in attitude and started feeling sad because Feng Length, who was usually kind to her, now hated and distanced himself from her again. At that time, Assistant Han and Dr. Zhang found Feng Leng's behavior strange too. They remembered that during the previous rainy day, Shou Qi was the only woman Feng Leng remembered. Soon after, Dr. Zhang visited Shou Qi and explained Feng Leng's amnesia to her. Shou Qi was shocked to hear this. Dr. Zhang then asked Shou Qi if she would still be willing to help cure Feng Leng's illness, even though Feng Leng currently hated her. Assistant Han tried to show Feng Leng's memory data related to Shou Qi but they couldn't access it because someone had hacked the data, and it was Jung Sui, of course. Turns out, Jung Sui had feelings for Feng Length since high school, and she knew about his illness for a long time. When she found out Feng Length wasn't in the office, Jung Sui and Ai Lund sneaked into Feng Length's study and deleted all the memory data related to Shou Qi. They did this so he wouldn't have any evidence of his relationship with Shou Qi 
if he forgot due to his amnesia later on. Now that Feng Length had forgotten about Shou Qi, Zheng Sui saw an opportunity to get closer to him. She spoke negatively about Shou Qi in front of Feng Length to make him hate and distance himself from her even more. Zheng Sui also tried to remind Feng Length of their past in high school, but unfortunately, he still didn't remember anything. Meanwhile, Shou Qi started feeling jealous when she saw how close Feng Length and Zheng Sui were becoming. But she tried hard to hide her jealousy, especially when the media announced that Feng Length and Zheng Sui were officially dating. At that moment, Shou Qi tried to convince herself as she didn't really like Feng Length. She even put a photo of Feng Length and Zheng Sui in her room to prove to herself that she wasn't jealous. Feng Li felt sorry for Shou Qi's pain and always tried to support and comfort her. However, this made Feng Li develop feelings for her. Even though Feng Length seemed to have forgotten about Shou Qi, she still tried to be kind to him. Shou Qi was even willing to endure his scolding in order to keep his illness a secret. Her genuine care for Feng Length made him fall in love with her again. Despite forgetting about Shou Qi, Feng Length realized she was different from his previous girlfriends, who only cared about his wealth. Shou Qi always showed concern for him, even when he scolded her. Besides that, Assistant Hunt often reminds Feng Length about the past moments he shared with Shou Qi. Shou Qi started feeling happy because Feng Length was treating her nicely again. However, her happiness didn't last long. Feng Length's father informed Shou Qi that Feng Length would soon marry Zheng Sui. He even asked Shou Qi to stay away from Feng Length. Shou Qi felt devastated hearing this from Feng Length's father. She couldn't deny her true feelings anymore because she had fallen in love with Feng Length. She considered leaving Feng Length to avoid causing any trouble in his relationship with Zheng Sui. She even tried to use her powers to retrieve the gemstone from Feng Length's heart, so she could return to her planet and leave him forever. However, her actions unintentionally caused Feng Length severe heart pain, and he had to be taken to the hospital. In that moment, Shou Qi felt deeply regretful for her actions and asked help from Feng Li to meet Feng Length without their father's knowledge. When she finally got into Feng Length's hospital room, she burst into tears and apologized to him. Through her tears, Shou Qi used her powers to try to heal Feng Length, promising not to take the gemstone from his heart again. She also vowed to stay on Earth forever if it meant he could survive. The next day, Feng Length woke up from his coma. Even though Shou Qi couldn't return to her planet, she still planned to leave him. However, as she was about to depart, Feng Length stopped her. Mrs. Che informed Dr. Zhang that Shou Qi was planning to leave, and he relayed this to Feng Length. After their meeting, Feng Length fakes being in pain, which worries Shou Qi. This leads Shou Qi to decide not to leave, especially since Dr. Zhang mentioned that Feng Length left the hospital because of her. Feng Li, who saw them together, felt jealous because Shou Qi was close to his older brother again. Seeing Shou Qi and Feng Length together makes Feng Li jealous, and he eventually confesses his love for Shou Qi. This surprises her, because she didn't realize both brothers had feelings for her. Despite knowing Shou Qi still likes Feng Length, Feng Li is determined not to give up and challenges Feng Length to compete for Shou Qi's affection. There, Feng Li promises to do whatever it takes to win Shou Qi's heart, leaving Feng Length surprised by his brother's declaration of love for Shou Qi. One day, Ai Lun sneaked into Shou Qi's room when she wasn't home. Using a detector, he searched for something specific. He found Shou Bu, Shou Qi's pet turtle, and took it to the research room. Later, he called Shou Qi to pick up Shou Bu. When Shou Qi arrived, Ai Lun showed her CCTV footage where she disappeared. He demanded to know the truth about Shou Qi's abilities, but she hesitated to answer. Then, Ai Lun revealed he had a gemstone that belonged to her. Shou Qi tried to grab it, but Ai Lun pushed her causing her to fall and injure her hands on broken glass. Ailan was startled to see Shou Qi's blue blood when she got hurt. He moved closer to her, but Feng Length intervened, striking Ailan from behind. Feng Length then fired Ailan and ordered him to leave the office, but Ailan was determined. He plotted to kidnap Shou Qi again, and, once successful, he attempted to harm her with a knife. To Ailan's surprise, Shou Qi's blood turned into gemstones upon contact with the air. Seeing this, he greedily collected her blood, hoping to sell the gemstones for a hefty sum. However, Feng Length and Feng Li arrived just in time to rescue Shou Qi. During the battle between Ai Lund and Feng Li, he attempted to stab Feng Li with a knife. At that moment, Feng Length, witnessing this, rushed to protect his brother. He intervened and grabbed the knife, sustaining injuries to his hands in the process. Feng Length then catch Ai Lund, ensuring their safety before they left the scene. 
Feng Lin's selfless act deeply touched Feng Li, despite their rivalry over Shou Qi. Feng Li realized Feng Lin's genuine concern for him, willing to endure pain to keep him safe. After this incident, Feng Li decided to stop competing with Feng Lin for Shou Qi's affection. Meanwhile, Shou Qi experienced a sudden weakness in her body, unable to stand or exert any strength. Concerned, she asked her turtle, Shou Bu, to examine her. Shou Bu revealed that Shou Qi had lost a significant amount of blood, causing her to lose her strength. She even struggled to eat Earth's food. Shou Bu suggested retrieving the gemstone or signal device from Feng Lang's heart to regain their strength and return to their planet. If Shou Qi doesn't take the signal device, she'll be in danger and could die on Earth. But she wanted to take it because she'd rather risk her own life than put Feng Lang in danger again. However, Shou Bu warns her that even if Feng Lang survives, you won't be happy if Shou Qi dies because he loves her. Later, Shou Qi realizes it's going to rain soon and Feng Lang will forget to take precautions. So she decides to erase all the memories Feng Lang has of her. That way, even if he loses his memory later, he won't remember her, but he'll still be happy, and she can leave him forever without causing him pain. Shou Qi wanted to find out where her memory data was stored, so she tried to get Feng Lang to tell her. After she found out, she tried to enter the room where it was kept, but it was really hard to get into. Then, Feng Li accidentally showed up. Shou Qi asked Feng Li for help opening the door, but he didn't want to because it was his brother's secret room. So Shou Qi tried to force the door open, but she didn't have enough strength. Sadly, she ended up getting hurt, and Feng Li was shocked to see that her blood was blue. Shortly after, Shou Qi finally revealed to Feng Li that she wasn't human but an alien. She begged Feng Li to help her access the memory storage space, so she could delete all the memories Feng Lang had of her. She felt they couldn't be together forever. Finally, Feng Li agreed to help Shou Qi. Once inside, she started deleting the memories while crying. Feng Li, seeing her tears, asked her to stop, but Shou Qi insisted. She blamed herself for falling in love with Feng Lang and coming to Earth, so she wanted to feel the pain of heartache herself. Shortly after, a loud noise came from the room. At that time, Feng Li urged Shou Qi to leave quickly because it meant that Feng Lang would arrive soon. True to that, Feng Lang, who was in his office, received a message on his phone notifying him that all his memory data had been hacked. He rushed to the storage area. Upon arrival, Feng Lang immediately confronted Feng Li, demanding to know why he did it. Feng Li admitted to his actions, explaining that he didn't want Feng Lang to get close to Shou Qi again. But Feng Lang suspected Shou Qi's involvement and went to find her at home. He arrived angry and ended up crying in front of Shou Qi, feeling betrayed by her actions. He never expected her to do such a thing. Soon after, thunder rumbled in the sky, a sign that rain was on its way. Shou Qi urged Feng Lang to go home. He left her room but stayed outside her house, crying and staring at her window until the rain poured down heavily. Inside, Shou Qi felt sad but hoped Feng Lang would move on soon. Mrs. Che suggested Shou Qi go to Feng Lang feeling sorry for him standing in the rain. At first, Shoki ignored her, but as time passed, she couldn't bear to see his condition worsen. Soon after, she approached him and hugged him, but he soon fainted in her arms and was taken to the hospital. Despite the heavy rain, Feng Lang didn't forget Shoki. Instead, he remembered all their memories, including the fact that she was an alien who had saved him in an accident and the truth about his mother's death when he was young. So when Feng Lang was just five years old, his mother was about to leave him. It was pouring rain at the time. At that time, he desperately tried to stop her, but suddenly, a speeding car approached. His mother, in a brave act, pushed Feng Lang out of harm's way, but got hit by the car herself and tragically passed away. Feng Lang cried bitterly beside her lifeless body in the heavy rain. This traumatic event caused him to forget about other women whenever it rained, as his mother was the only woman he could think of. Now, Feng Lang wanted to know why Shou Qi deleted all her memory data. He decided to use the hormonal perfume they had designed before to find out. Soon after, he invited her to a bar. Shortly after, he wore a mask and asked Shou Qi to join him on stage to dance. Shou Qi agreed and went up on stage. Feng Lang then removed his mask and sprayed some special perfume on his neck. As soon as Shou Qi smelled the perfume, she felt strangely hypnotized. She answered all of Feng Lang's questions truthfully. She revealed to him that she was an alien who had saved him from an accident. She also mentioned that she didn't have much time left to live. Besides that, she explained that the little turtle Feng Lang always carried 
was actually her shape-shifting personal assistant. Three minutes later, the effects of the hormonal perfume wore off, and Shoki regained consciousness. She hurriedly left the stage and tried to run away from Feng Leng. However, he managed to catch Shobu, Shoki's companion. There, Feng Leng tried to communicate with Shobu, but he couldn't hear Shobu's responses even though Shobu could hear him. Shortly after, Feng Leng placed Shobu on a computer keyboard, hoping that Shobu could communicate by typing. Surprisingly, he was able to write messages. There, he explained that Shoki had lost her strength and couldn't even eat Earth's food anymore. The only way for Shoki to survive was to take the signal device from Feng Leng's heart and return to her planet. Without hesitation, Feng Length agreed to undergo an operation to remove the signal device and save Shou Qi. The next day, Shou Qi felt very sad when she learned that Feng Length had the surgery. After the operation, Feng Length asked the doctor to give the signal device to Shou Qi and told her to leave right away. He didn't want to see her because he was afraid he wouldn't be able to let her go. Shou Qi used to long for the signal device to return to her, but now that she had it, she felt sad and couldn't bear to leave Hearth and Feng Length. Soon after, Shoki tried to call Feng Leng, but he ignored her. So she sent him a message and asked him to meet her at a bridge. She even threatened to throw away the signal device if he didn't come. When they met, they hugged and cried. There, Shoki told Feng Leng she wouldn't go back to her planet. She'd rather stay on Earth and be with him, even if it meant risking her life. Hearing that, Feng Leng cried too, touched by Shoki's deep love for him. At that time, Shoki was ready to toss the signal device into the river. But Feng Leng stopped her, grabbing her hand and taking the device. He explained that Shou Bu had told him pressing the device would activate it. When Feng Leng pressed it, the device lit up with a blue light, signaling that a spaceship was on its way to pick up Shou Qi. Feeling heartbroken and believing Feng Leng wanted her to leave, Shou Qi cried. She thought he didn't love her anymore. But Feng Leng assured her he just wanted to keep her safe and prevent her from dying on Earth. Then Shou Qi shared that there was still time before the spaceship arrived and she wanted to spend it loving each other again. Hearing that, Feng Leng agreed. Shou Qi cherished her final days on Earth, spending time with Feng Leng, Feng Li, Mrs. Chai, and Dr. Zhang. That night, she stayed over at Feng Leng's house. While they slept, Feng Leng cried out in his sleep, pleading for Shou Qi not to leave him. Despite asking Shou Qi to go back to her planet, Feng Leng didn't actually want her to leave. Shou Qi hugged him tightly and promised she wouldn't leave. The next day, Shoki told Feng Leng she decided to stay. But Feng Leng insisted she leave and forced her to go. While they were out enjoying themselves, Feng Leng accidentally bumped into someone while crossing the street. As he gathered his things, time seemed to freeze and suddenly Shoki vanished, taken by the spaceship. Seeing that, Feng Leng cried as he realized Shoki had truly left him. Years passed, but Feng Leng still faithfully waited for Shoki, even though she was gone. One day, while Feng Leng was in a flower garden, Feng Li called him and mentioned a woman nearby who he wanted Feng Leng to meet. Shortly after, the woman approached Feng Leng, and to his surprise, it was Shou Qi. At that time, he was speechless, feeling like he was in a dream. Suddenly, Shou Qi kissed him and reassured him that it wasn't a dream. Overwhelmed with emotion, Feng Leng cried tears of joy as he realized Shou Qi had truly returned. Finally, they could be together again and live happily ever after. The series ends. The moral lesson from this series forget love letters, just spray some hormonal perfume, and watch them come running.